Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next event in the Originator Connect online engagement webcast series. And it's my privilege and honor as director of uh, online engagement here at the Originator Connect Network to share this great program with all of you at where we're really going to go deep on how to pivot your business to products and services that will be able to weather any market. You know, most of the financial experts and pundits that I read commentary on, uh, a great majority are predicting that there is a potential for a, another reset in the real estate markets and a potential recession coming in the not too distant future. And when you think about what happens in those types of markets, you have to have product diversity that gives you the option to do business that will be strong when traditional even residential purchase business slows down because of a combination of economic factors. So today's program, we've got a group of experts from uh, an amazing supporter and company uh, called Corvest that are gonna be sharing with you tips and tools on how to grow your business with investment property lending and loans. By the way, I wanna also share with you that today's event is intended to be a highly interactive and engaging conversation with our panelists and experts. We want to hear from you. We want to see what more and learn about who you are and what you want to know that's going to help you grow and, and improve your business in what you do. By the way, it's not only with you that are already on this, but who else you might know that uh, might be interested in taking advantage of this type of information or learning. You know, the, the colleague uh, across the office or across the country that you think would really benefit from hearing this type of information. Below you, there's a widget that looks like a paper airplane. And, and by the way, we are gonna create an incentive here for you guys to get involved and share this with your friends and colleagues across the country. Um, we're gonna take just a few minutes here and if you hit that widget and invite a colleague, the, the information has already been typed in. All you got to do is drop in their email addresses and hit send. Uh, those of you who have participated in this opportunity to invite your friends and colleagues to join us in today's event are um, uh, going to be registering each each person you share this with is another entry in a raffle drawing. Towards the end of the event, we're going to be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card. So without further ado, let's get into the meat of the program. This program is totally about you and how to help you grow your business with a unique set of product that a lot of originators don't typically understand. And so today we've got two great experts uh, from Corvest. Um, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Chris Heffel, uh, who is a seasoned veteran in the industry, somebody who's been doing a mortgage business for well over 35 years with a wide variety of experience. Uh, Chris, why don't you say hey to the folks for just a few seconds? Oh, thank you, Eric. Yeah. No. Well, pleased to be here with everyone and uh, excited to talk to you about not only our company, but some of the products we're offering in the uh, investor space. Awesome. I also have somebody that, that I've grown very close to over the last couple of years, uh, getting to know him in a variety of different environments, even at his previous company and now uh, working with Corvest, is Mr. Sam Bajalik, um, somebody I have a tremendous amount of respect for. He's a great speaker and educator, and I think he's got a lot of awesome information uh, to share with all of you today. So at this point, I'm going to step aside and let these guys take and run the uh, run the ball here. Um, so Sam, Chris, I know you've got a ton of information to share, so let's get to it. Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and, and start. And we'll talk a little about today's agenda. We can uh, set the table uh, for what we're going to take a look at. Today, <laughs> the agenda slide, please. So uh, the beginning, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the, our company, right? I think it's always important to know who you're, who you're working with, who, who you're listening to, who's giving you advice. Um, then we'll talk about the opportunity in the single family rental space. We'll talk about uh, what the market's like. We talk about where the opportunity is. Uh, what we're seeing, again, this is this is all what we do. And you'll kind of see that as we go along in, in the presentation. Um, this is what we live and breathe. We're, we're not uh, we're not doing um, single family Fannie and Freddie loans. We're not doing FHA and VA. All we do is work in this rental space. So we'll hear about the market opportunity, uh, what's, out, what's out there. We'll talk about some of the programs. So how can you uh, take that opportunity? What kind of programs are out there you can put your clients into and uh, originate loans? Um, then we'll also talk about how to partner with us. That's kind of why we're here today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how brokers today are doing business with us. And, and then we'll talk about some next steps, a couple action items, and uh, ways you can you can take what you learned today and uh, produce some business out of it. Um, so so right here at, at this point, I think I'd like to hand it back to Chris. I think he has a video to share with us that'll talk a little bit about. Uh okay. 
All right, well, thank you, Sammy. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about Corvest, what we do, and uh, what the residential investment property market is. Uh, so Corvest is a specialty finance company. We were started in 2014, and we're focused exclusively on residential investment property. Well, what do I mean by that? We're looking at uh, single-family rental properties, uh, townhouses, condominiums, and to a lesser extent, multifamily properties. The key is that we're looking at assets that are income producing. These are not consumer loans, and we're underwriting and sizing our loans based on uh, the income that comes off the asset, not necessarily on uh, the borrower or the borrower's income. Uh, we originate loans through multiple channels. That includes brokers, uh, correspondents, wholesalers. Uh, we're very focused on the uh, loan, origination, loan origination platform. I've been on, on the MBA board for many years, and uh, we'd like to develop relationships with many of you to source uh, product to us. And as you can see in the graph here, since our founding in 2014, we've had fairly steady growth. We've already originated over $3.5 billion in loans uh, in the uh, residential investment property space. Now, a little bit about our history and how we got here. Uh, we were founded, as I said, in 2014. What happened post the uh, housing crisis is, is that a lot of big institutional investors started buying up homes and converting them into rental properties. They had the access of, to uh, Wall Street Capital, to big banks and uh, lending institutions. And while they were buying these assets, they noticed that, or we noticed, that a lot of the smaller mid-sized investors didn't have access to that same capital. So we saw an opportunity to create a lending platform that catered to these small to mid-sized investors in residential investment properties. And that's how we got started. We're actually making a bridge uh, from Wall Street to Main Street in a sense. We're, we're letting uh, smaller investors access Wall Street capital. And by that, we what we can offer really attractive financing to people who are buy, buying investing properties. Since we started, we've closed over three and a half billion dollars in loans. We've financed over 25,000 investment properties and it's really just scratching the surface. We'll talk a little bit about the market in a bit, but we have become the leading investor to uh, residential real estate investors in the country. And we've done that uh, directly and also through financial intermediaries such as yourselves. We are located in several offices across the country. Uh, we're based in Irvine, California, in Orange County, with an office in uh, New York. That's where I am, and also an office in Los Angeles. But we have people uh, located throughout the country, both originators and underwriters, and they're located in Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, and Maryland. And as you can see from this map, we have, uh, we have a na nationwide footprint. We have already financed assets in 44 states. And I think a really interesting thing for you is that you are able to originate loans, not in the state you're located in, but you can lo originate loans all across the country. So this gives you an opportunity to expand your uh, client base, as well as to expand the uh, number of products that you're offering. A couple highlights about uh, Corvest, a few of these I've mentioned before. Uh, again, three and a half billion of loans closed, 25,000 properties in 44 states. We've also, we're one of the first uh, people to do GSE lending in the SFR space. We completed a transaction with Freddie Mac uh, at the end of last year, and we are an approved seller servicer for Freddie Mac under their flow program for SFRs. We're one of the uh, well, very few uh, correspondence for them. So not only can you access Wall Street capital uh, through our programs directly, we also give you uh, access to Fannie or Freddie Mac programs and possibly Fannie Mae in the future as well. We have multiple delivery channels. So as I said, we work through correspondence, through wholesalers, uh, or just simply through brokers. Uh, we, we have a number of different programs that Sammy will talk about later that will allow you to cut uh, source product to us either directly or indirectly. And one of the interesting things about our business and our program is that we offer products for the full life cycle of an investment in uh, residential investment properties. So we provide acquisition financing or lines of credit to allow people to buy assets for either aggregation or fix and flip. Uh, we provide renovation funds for those fix and flip assets. And then we also provide long-term permanent capital, either for blanket loans on portfolios of assets 
or for one asset at a time, a single asset product. But I think Sammy has a couple questions for the audience. Sure. Uh, actually, before we get into these poll questions, one thing I wanted to note is, uh, please, I encourage you to use the, the Q&A uh, section of um, the broadcast. Any detailed questions that you have, we will put them in the queue, and we're more than happy to answer them as we get towards the end of the broadcast. So here's a quick poll, quick survey. Uh, if you can answer it, we really appreciate it. We'll run through these. Uh, again, do you have any clients that purchase, purchase multiple investment properties uh, per, during the year? Take some time to answer that one. And I think we have another one coming up. <clears throat> Do we have another uh, poll question? Oh, here we go. Hey, how about that? Um, this one, pretty important. Have you ever turned down loans on rental properties because your client's tax returns would not support the traditional Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac DTI guidelines. Uh, perhaps they have a more complicated tax return. They own multiple investment properties. Maybe they're self-employed. Uh, they have uh, a lot of write-offs. Um, just curious if you've ever turned a loan down uh, for DTI on an investment property. Thank you for answering that. I think we have one more before we get back into it. I'll ask the marketing team. Hey, there's one. Uh, foreign nationals, right. Uh, we're seeing this all throughout the country. Um, you know, it's tough to get a foreign national loan done. Uh, just curious if, if you ever had a foreign national looking for an investment property. I appreciate your participation. But I think here uh, we'll hand it back off uh, to Chris, and he's going to talk a little bit more about residential uh, investment property loans and uh, the marketplace. Thanks, Sammy. Yeah, so maybe just a level set. I want to make sure we all are talking about the same thing, and I'd like to define what we call residential investment loans. Uh, these are basically commercial loans that are uh, secured by residential property. In other words, they're non-owner occupied properties. So these can be uh, loans secured by single family residences that are leased out, condominiums. We do a lot of business with individual condominiums or broken condominium projects. It could be a townhome or an attached home uh, or multifamily assets. And uh, you'd be surprised how many multifamily assets we see. These tend to be smaller properties that may not may fall below the radar screen of uh, institutional commercial lenders or uh, Fannie and Freddie. The real key thing to this, and one of the questions alluded to this, is we're underwriting the property based, or we're underwriting the loan based on the income that the property generates. We're not focused uh, as heavily on the income of our borrower or sponsor. So these are uh, loans secured by the real estate and underwritten based on the income that uh, is generated by the property. So we tend to focus, again, on properties that have leases in place and are generating income. Now, this market, many people think the investment uh, market for residential real estate really came up after the financial crisis, but that's not true. It's really been a major part of the uh, housing stock, and in particular, the rental housing stock for decades. But since the financial crisis, you've seen over $50 billion of investment capital come into the space from institutional uh, investors. That started with equity investors who were buying up uh, distressed homes, from a, lot, a lot of them as a result of the subprime crisis, and later it was lenders like ourselves who were bringing institutional debt capital into the market. So Corvest, as I mentioned, was formed to provide financing to these smaller and medium-sized investors who need debt financing to participate in the uh, residential investment uh, market. A little bit about the size of the market, of, you know, of 118 million homes uh, that are in the uh, U.S., 30 percent are rented. And uh, this includes primarily uh, uh, apartment buildings, large apartment buildings, about 18 million units. But surprisingly, about 16 million of them are single family rental units. So just by itself, single family rentals is about the same size as the multifamily market. If you include townhomes and some of the other assets that we're looking at, small multifamilies, it's actually larger than the multifamily market. So it creates a huge opportunity 
for investors in this space and, and uh, by transit properties, huge opportunities for you to generate loan volume. Our target market is about 30 million units in the US. Um, the residential investment loan market has been driven a lot by uh, a number of demographic trends. I think many of you are aware of the decline in home ownership that has taken place since the financial crisis. Today, home ownership has declined from about 69% of households to 64%, and it seems to have stabilized there. But it's a pretty low home ownership rate. Conversely, it's a very high rentership rate. And I think that high rentership has been driven by a number of different factors. I like to talk about demographics, dislocation, and desire. Demographics is simply the number of household formations that are expected over the next few years. And the fact that a lot of households were not formed during the financial crisis because people just couldn't afford to do so. You had a lot of basement dwellers or people who were living in roommate situations uh, who couldn't start uh, their own homes, but are doing so now. So you've got a lot of demand for housing generally, and a lot of that is coming into the rental market. Number two is dislocation. Again, because of the financial crisis, a number of people were foreclosed or had bad credit and can't get into the, uh, the home ownership market. I mean, if you look back, someone who was foreclosed out of a house 10 years ago, 50% of them are still uh, in the rental market. So a lot of those people stay in the rental market after they've lost houses. You also have a lot of people or households that are saddled with student debt or other uh, limitations to their ability to buy a house, maybe they don't have a down payment. So dislocation is a big uh, factor. And the third factor I think that's uh, really leading to this is desire. I'm not a millennial, but uh, millennials do demonstrate a, a, I'm far from being a millennial, but uh, they do uh, demonstrate a desire for flexibility and mobility. Uh, they rent their cars, they rent their movies, and they tend to rent houses more than own their houses. Many of them have seen their parents suffer as a result of their home, own home ownership, so they tend to rent more often than buy. So we see a lot of existing and pent-up demand for rental housing. And as I said, if you look at the bottom chart here, this is not a new industry. So while we see a recent increase in demand for uh, rental housing, the demand for rental housing and specifically for single family rental housing has been pretty consistent uh, since the 70s. It's represented about a third of all rental housing. So something that you and your clients should be very focused on. Uh, one last thing I'd like to point out, uh, and we mentioned it in the introduction, uh, we do see a rise in interest rates. There's been a rise uh, already this year, and many of us expect interest rates to rise further. Increases in interest rates make home ownership that much more difficult. In fact, we're estimating that for every 1% rise in, in interest rates, it knocks about 5 million people out of qualification for buying a home. So that's another 5 million households that will go into the renter market. And it's another 5 million people that probably won't be coming to you for a, a owner-occupied mortgage. But by offering additional products, you can still capture that demand by going to the landlords for the rental houses uh, that these people are ultimately going to um, occupy. So that's it for my remarks. I'll be happy to answer questions later, but now I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Sammy. We'll talk a little bit about why you should be offering residential investment loans. Well, thank you, Chris. And, and again, I want to first of all, thank everyone for taking time out. We know your time is valuable and we're glad to have you here with us today. Again, for the Q&A, uh, please uh, enter those in as we go along, and we're going to address those at the end of the presentation. So again, why offer residential investment loans? Uh, I, I think the, the main thing to get out of this is, is it's a huge market. It's not had uh, much attention paid to it over uh, the last 10 years. Since the crisis, uh, capital has been very tight. Uh, as, as Chris mentioned, the large institutions were the ones that had the opportunity to go out and buy these homes. And, and it, hasn't, it hadn't trickled down to, uh, to the residential loan originators. And that's one of the reasons companies like ourselves are out there looking to bring this product to market, looking for companies and individuals like yourselves to distribute the product. So again, uh, it, it's a large, large uh, marketplace you can see there. Uh, I think now it says 55, if not 60% um, of, of folks with 10 or fewer homes. Uh, it's a growing and growing industry. You're going to see more and more non-agency lenders come into this uh, field. On the next slide, we'll talk about a little bit about the, uh, the characteristics of a client that you're looking for. Um, these are ones that typically don't qualify for the normal conventional Fannie or Freddie investor loan financing. 
Um, they might have had uh, lower credit scores, perhaps. They could uh, maybe not be able to, to uh, prove the income that they have. Um, maybe they want to close it in LLCs or LPs. This is very common for professional investors. Um, they might uh, they might own too many properties, right? Once you get over ten, uh, it's tough. Uh, you know, Fannie and Freddie don't don't want those in their normal conventional product. Um, with us, it's unlimited, so they can own uh, fifty, they can own a hundred, they can own a thousand investment properties. So uh, something to keep in consideration. I think we talked about the DTI limits uh, earlier. That's one reason that the products uh, that we have available are very useful. Um, it's an easier underwrite again for those who can't go full doc. Um, also, it's a, it's a great takeout for those that had hard money loans. Uh, there's a huge marketplace for, for hard money. Uh, we are uh, one way to take those loans out. So keep that in uh, consideration. Um, I think here we're going to take a, a, a brief look at some, what some of our uh, investors have had to say about working with uh, Corvest. It is the main source of my acquisitions through uh, bridge financing and and then I roll it into the term financing. I'm able to get my capital back once I do that and I go do it again so it's um, it's probably the secret to my wealth. They pretty much saved our business because without them we wouldn't be able to continue buying um, and get out of the hard money. They helped us grow exponentially and they've been hands down the best to work with. Great. Well, let's uh, let's take a quick look at the marketplace and some of the lending products uh, that are that are out there in the marketplace. So the question is who and and how do we fund these loans? What what's out there now? Um, one way is, is family and friends, right? This has uh, been a way it's been, been done all through the years, and this will continue to go on. Uh, it's not an unlimited resource by any means, but uh, some of you have an Uncle Joe or, or an Aunt Nancy out there, or uh, it could be a, a friend of the family that might want to lend the money. This is great. Uh, sometimes the low cost of capital, but again, it's it's not unlimited. And sometimes doing business with family and friends isn't isn't so fun. Um, local banks, there, there's a great opportunity for that, but again, it's it's local. Um, it's going to be somewhat restrictive. They might want more documentation, um, higher down payments. They might want to prove uh, prove income. Um, again, that's that's one way that things are out there. This is an online marketplace. Uh, availability of funds is not uh, certain every time. Uh, not very consistent. And then of course, uh, as always, cash is king. If, uh, if you can buy the houses for cash, that's, that's a great way to do it. Uh, again, not uh, unlimited resource, at least for, for this guy, but uh, you, the smart investors, what they want to do is really leverage the cash. They don't want to pay 100% down. Um, they want to take that cash, leverage it, uh, and that's what professional investors do. Um, so that brings us down to the specialty investors, as you see there in the bottom middle of the screen. Again, these programs aren't a nice to have for us. Um, this is all that we do. We live and breathe investment property, rental financing all day long, every day. It's not a hook to, for us to, to, for you to send us your FHA or VA loans. This is what we do. Um, it, it's all day long. Uh, it's what we're good at. On the next slide, we'll talk about some of the products that we have here at, uh, at Corvest. Um, real briefly, we'll uh, cover the, the three of them, three the core products, uh, the, the single property loan or the single asset rental loan. This is a 30-year fixed product. Rates start in the uh, high sixes, 75% uh, LTV, uh, 650 FICO, again, amortized 360 years. And very important is for a stabilized rental. So um, as mentioned before, we qualify on the lease. So we, we call, qualify on the cash flow of the um, of the property, not the income of the client. So keep that in mind. And again, it's unlimited assets owned. Our portfolio rental product, and you might know this more as a blanket loan. So what this is, is we take a portfolio of loans, it's minimum five units, $500,000. And what we can do is, is cross collateralize them into one loan. They can have uh, 10 properties, they can have 100 properties, they can have 500 properties. Uh, we've done all those types of loans. Uh, these are underwritten like a commercial loan. So it does, we do use, uh, utilize a debt service coverage ratio. It's a five and 10 year fixed rate. That's a 30 year amortization. We can customize it to lower if, uh, if that's at the request of the client. Um, interest only is an option on it, but again, we're underwriting to the debt service. It does have a 75 maximum percent LTV, but if the debt service isn't there, we might have to lower that LTV. So something to consider. And again, these are for stabilized rentals. Uh, the other product we call our single asset bridge loan, uh, you might know it as a fix and flip. 
This is typically a 12 month interest only loan to buy a distressed property and rehab it. Um, we've also seen folks uh, get this loan, fix it. Instead of flipping it, they go back to our single asset rental loan and they hold it. So uh, fix and hold is being a very popular marketplace uh, uh, item today. So keep that in mind when you're talking to your, uh, to your investor clients. On this, we finance up to 75% of the purchase. And in some cases, depending on the rehab component, we can finance up to 100% of the rehab component. Again, interest uh, only. We'll go into a little detail of these a little bit more. I know I covered a lot of this, so I don't want to repeat myself as much as I like to hear myself speak. So again, this is a 30-year fix. This is more for the buy and rent a client that you would have or refinance an investing, uh, a current investment. Again, maybe they purchased it with a hard money loan at 10 or 12 percent. They want to stabilize it now that they have a tenant in there. Um, this looks a lot like your normal residential loans, the typical loan that you're seeing every day. Um, we, we close these in LLCs. That's very important. The professional investment group, uh, that's how they prefer to do it. Again, no, no uh, income tax, no 4506, uh, uh, no W-2s, no pay stubs, no limit on the properties owned. Um, and again, this is underwritten as a business purpose loan. So what that means, uh, there's no TRID. Right. So, yes, no TRID, uh, no LEs, no CDs. Uh, we'll use an old GFE and a HUD-1 to close the loan. That gives you the opportunity not only to earn uh, points on the loan, you can also um, earn a yield spread premium. Um, for those of you that are as old as me and have been, have been in the business a long time, you remember there was a thing called yield spread premium. But since these are commercial loans written on residential investment properties, uh, there is uh, there is no TRID, so we follow uh, kind of the old rules. Um, also, licensing requirement, NMLS not required. It gives you the opportunity to originate loans in, in the states that we originate loans in. So the footprint, 40 plus states throughout the country, it gives you an opportunity to uh, expand your marketing footprint. Uh, real quick, we'll talk briefly about uh, the, the term loan, the portfolio loan we mentioned. This is uh, commonly known as a blanket loan, I know, in the residential mortgage industry. Um, single families, two to fours, condos, townhomes, we'll put some small multifamilies in these portfolios. The main thing to understand and remember is we need five units and, and 500000 minimum on these loans. Um, again, it's underwritten with a debt service coverage, uh, maximum 75% uh, LTV, to a 1.25 DSCR, again, debt service coverage ratio, a fix for five or 10 years. And the other third product we'll go into a little bit of detail more about is the bridge loan. So on, on this single asset bridge loan, as I mentioned, this is typically for a distressed property. Um, what you're looking for uh, is, is a property where you're gonna either buy it, fix it up, um, or you're gonna go in and buy it and you might be uh, you might flip it instead of renting it out. So uh, again, huge market here, uh, over 50 billion annually, uh, growing and growing every day. Uh, keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at these uh, distressed assets that we might be able to uh, help you originate those loans. I think we've covered the products there, uh, Eric and Chris. Um, maybe if you have some more polls, we can, we can go ahead and do that. Miss some surveys for the audience. Oh, thank you so much. Um, well, I'll tell you what, it, uh, Sam, if it's all right with you guys, why don't we go ahead and jump in at answering a couple of questions. There were several sure. that came through the Q&A. And guys, by the way, audience members, um, uh, this is your opportunity to pick the brains of these experts and really find out the nuts and bolts of what you need to know about how to do these loans. So use this opportunity to, to ask those detailed, specific, even if you've got a specific scenario that you want to know more about, uh, go ahead and uh, let us know, um, you know, what you want to hear more information, what, you know, use this opportunity to pick the brains of these experts uh, by typing questions into the Q&A. Uh, one of the first questions is um, uh, that came from Mo is LLC or INC or Inc. Vesting, um, is this a recourse loan or a non-recourse loan? And, and help us understand a little bit more about how that plays out, Sam. Well, um, again, it's different for every product. I'll speak to the, the single asset is going to be a recourse loan. And, and Chris, do you want to comment on, on the term loan and how it works on different loan levels? if Chris has himself a microphone. Tell you what, guys, let me go to some poll questions really quickly. Sure. If you guys are thinking through and answering some stuff in the Q&A, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll go through this. Um, guys, we, from the audience perspective, we want to know a little bit more about where your opportunity and interest is as we direct the, the rest of this conversation we're having with you here. So the first one is here, have you ever turned down or referred uh, away? Uh, 
he said the same ones as earlier. If you ever turn down or refer away any loans or portfolio rental properties, um, it, it will revisit this. Um, you know what? <sighs> okay. So guys, tell you what, we're we're going to move on to the, the Q&A section uh, at, um, as we move ahead today while we're trying to work out some of the technical difficulties on the back end. Uh, uh, Gabby or uh, Christy, if you could let me know when Chris is back online and ready to go. Yeah, here. I'm back. I'm sorry. It was on mute. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So the question, uh, Sam, why don't you go ahead and re-ask the question that you wanted Chris yeah. to answer before. And yeah, then Chris. So the question, from, the question from the group came in on recourse versus non-recourse. I was speaking specifically to the uh, single asset rental, that, that that is a recourse loan. I know on the, the portfolio term slash blanket product, there's different levels of recourse and non-recourse depending on certain factors. I was wondering if you can comment on that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we can do those loans, either recourse or non-recourse. Uh, those assets, those portfolio loans are done exclusively to LLCs or corporate uh, single purpose entities. Uh, and they can be completely non-recourse. Uh, for smaller loans, we'll go recourse. And really the big difference is we have a slightly reduced reporting requirement for the recourse loans. Uh, we are requiring uh, uh, rent rolls to be reported on a regular basis. So a smaller loan can be recourse, but most often about 75% of that product is done on a completely non-recourse basis. Okay. Uh, we have another poll question up there. Uh, again, uh, we talked about it before. Um, do you ever have clients request to loan, close loans in LLCs? And I would even throw LPs in there too, because we, we do allow them. Uh... Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, we do. Uh, we do. Term loans are all in LLCs. Uh, the uh, single asset loans we can do uh, to a, an individual or to a, a partnership or LLC entity. Hey, here's another poll question. Uh, are you aware that you can offer some investment property loan programs in states that you're not NMLS licensed? I find out when I travel throughout the country that folks aren't familiar the fact that these are, again, commercial loans on residential rentals. Um, just want to kind of get a survey of our audience here if you were aware of that. All right, thank you. Well, again, we've talked about uh, the marketplace. Uh, we've talked about Corvest. We've talked about uh, you know the different programs. So the question is, again, how do you partner with us? We've partnered with uh, hundreds of uh, broker partners, real estate professionals, finance professionals throughout the United States. So uh, kind of how in, in, the, in the Jerry Maguire spirit uh, quote from the movie, you know, show me the money. So how, how can you earn money working with Corvest? We'll take a look at uh, some of the distribution channels that we have. Um, a quick referral is is, um, is is one of the ways. Again, on the quick referral side, you're going to provide us with a short firm, a short short form of uh, of the client that you have. Uh, maybe you're not familiar with the programs. You don't want to deviate from the current programs that you're doing. Um, we can kind of we will follow up with it. We work with our originators. We will get those loan closed, and you will be paid a uh, a referral fee on that. Um, our broker plus program. Uh, this is one of our newer programs just rolled out uh, in the last few months. It's uh, We're signing up, gosh, I don't know, at least 10 brokers a week on it. Very, very exciting. Um, this allows you to, uh, uh, to, to, to work on the loan, but we're going to do most of the processing on it. So we just ask you to gather uh, some of the uh, initial uh, agreements, uh, some of the initial um, documentation, and then we will process the loan for you. We'll order the credit. We're going to order the appraisal. Uh, we're going to do the underwrite. We're going to order the title. And again, you can earn uh, on this one yield spread premium as well as uh, you can you can charge points on this. So it's, it's very, very appealing. Again, and that way it doesn't take away from your core business. Uh, the wholesale channel, again, this is, this is pretty much like what you're normally doing today if you're a wholesale mortgage broker, where you're gonna control uh, the, the ordering of the credit, you're gonna order the uh, appraisal, um, you're gonna do the processing of the loan, and we're gonna do the underwrite. We'll coordinate the closing with you. We'll draw the docs, it closes in our name as a lender, and you have the opportunity to earn yield spread. And again, uh, charge points on those loans. More than happy to get you the details after the uh, after the, the, the conference call here today. And then correspondent. Uh, traditionally, we have uh, two two sides of correspondent. Our non delegated correspondent. Um, that's where the, the the client is doing all of the work. You're going to do uh, the, the credit, of course, the appraisal, the processing. You'll send it to us, 
for the underwriting decision. So we'll take on the risk for that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, coordinate the closing. Um, you can draw the docs, we can draw the docs, we can work on that together. You're gonna fund with your own funds and then we buy that loan uh, immediately back from you. So it does close in your name. And of course the true uh, delegated correspondent, that's where you're gonna take on the underwriting risk and you're gonna go through the whole, uh, the whole file flow, the whole life cycle of the loan and then you sell us a closed loan um, at the end of the day or end of the week or end of the month, whatever it might be. So again, lots of different ways you can deliver product to us. Um, I know, again, I know your time is valuable. Let's talk about some next steps and quick action items. I'd like you to take back uh, a look about 60 days and see if there's any investment properties that perhaps uh, you had to turn down. Um, it could have been, maybe they weren't an LLC. Uh, maybe the DTI didn't work full doc for Fannie or Freddie. Uh, perhaps they own too many properties. So take a look at that. Um, look at the immediate contacts and clients you've worked with uh, over the past uh, year, over the past three years, even the past five years. Um, maybe they own portfolios of rental properties. Now you have a product that you can come back to them and say, hey, uh, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, investment client, um, you own 12 rental properties. Did you know that you can leverage those into one loan or even a portion of them into one loan? Um, you can refinance them to a lower rate. You could cash out and perhaps buy some more rental properties. Um, again, now you have an opportunity to do that with uh, programs like ours. Uh, and again, most importantly, contact us to review scenarios and answer any questions that you might have on this growing space, this growing opportunity in the residential investment rental market. So um, again, current and past clients, leverage our rehab expertise and our, our experience in the investment markets. Also, I'd encourage you, uh, for those of you that do direct marketing, maybe you drop mail, maybe you do, uh, you have a dialer, whatever it might be, um, get your marketing folks on the phone with me. Let's, let's talk about it. We can maybe put you in the right position with, uh, with some uh, vendors. Um, I can talk to them and say, hey, look, this is the box we need to put the loans in. Um, just, just leverage my industry expertise and let me help you grow and earn your business. Sammy, uh, based on the poll responses, uh, over 80% of the people on the call have clients who are active in the investment uh, residential market. Huh. And the majority great. of them have had customers uh, who didn't meet Fannie Freddie DTI guidelines or uh, have foreign national clients. So I think this could be a really attractive product for many of the people on the call. Great. That, that sounds uh, that's great. Um, one, one thing I'll encourage you to do is, uh, is, is, is take advantage of the resources available. Um, there's a live download page on this platform. We have our uh, broker approval forms. We have um, some other information about uh, our matrix and guidelines. And of course, we can always uh, get together after the call on that. Um, also, we'll be uh, emailing out the winner of the referral contest. We do appreciate you participating in that, as always. Um, another thing, uh, our, our website, corevestfinance.com, um, our partners page, Take a look at that when you get a chance. We have uh, we have typically have our upcoming webinars on there. We have our trade show schedule on there. Not only is it great doing webcasts like this and meeting with you, the other most important thing is meeting someone face to face. Uh, you, you like to you like to be able to know someone a little better, um, and, and that's a great opportunity to do it as we do our road shows throughout the year. So um, I, I think with that, we'll take some Q and A. Eric, okay. Chris, if you have some. Awesome, guys. Um, well, there's plenty of interaction coming through, and we guys have a, a lot of different uh, questions that are coming through here. Uh, we'll just kind of pick and choose a little bit as we go. The um, uh, first one comes uh, through, uh, you know, from Dylan. Um, I won't try and uh, mess up that last name. It says, for the portfolio rental loans that you guys do, how much of your production is five-year versus 10-year uh, and how much is IO versus full AM? What do you feel the investors really benefit from most and, and are most attracted by when it comes to that product mix? Yeah, the majority of our term loans have been five year. I'd say it's about 75% five year, 25% uh, 10, 10 year. Uh, they do have yield maintenance. So people who want some flexibility in trading or selling assets might go with a five year product. People who are kind of set in stone and just want to lock in a good return on their portfolios might go for 10 years. Uh, the ability to go I.O. instead of amortization really depends on what the leverage is. So if you're below 65% uh, loan to value on a five-year product, we'll go I.O. If you're below 60% on a 10-year product, we'll go I.O. Otherwise, we're on a 30-year amortization. 
Okay. All right. Another question from Rochelle is, will you allow a lower debt service coverage ratio or DSCR with higher uh, credit scores at any loan size? Um, you know, the old risk versus reward FICO versus profitability. Uh, we, we do make exceptions. Uh, so we'll take a look at the full credit package. 120 uh, minimum debt service coverage is our guidelines. Uh, certainly in certain coastal markets or places where uh, asset yields are low, we might go with a lower debt service coverage ratio, uh, particularly if it's a low uh, loan to value ratio. So if it's a lower leverage loan, we can offer some flexibility on what the debt service coverage ratio is. Okay. All right. So it, it's it's not necessarily hard coded guideline, you know, DULP style underwriting. There's opportunity for common sense underwriting to work with you to try and make deals work, right? Absolutely. I think that's one of the benefits of working with a private lender versus uh, an institutional regulated lender is that we can uh, take a common sense approach to transactions. Yeah, definitely a partner in the success of the project as well. Uh, all right, so um, another question here that said, uh, what about mixed use properties? What about the, you know, those, those half residential, half commercial properties? We'll look at mixed use properties. I think we wanna keep the uh, non-residential component to below 20% uh, of the overall income, ideally below 15%, but uh, absolutely something we'll take a look at in the term product or in the bridge product. Okay. So would you actually do that for a, you know, a business owner who, you know, uh, I'm thinking like somebody who owns a restaurant or a, a dry cleaning shop and they want to buy a property that is also, uh, you know, 20, 25% residential on top of 75% commercial? I, I think it would be the inverse of that. So 25% okay. commercial and 75% residential. So someone had their dry cleaner in a, in a retail shop and uh, had apartments above it is something we could take a look at. Although dry cleaners in particular are a little bit more challenging, uh, but didn't chemicals and all that. something we could take a look at. Okay. The reason I ask is just, you know, thinking about opportunities, because, you know, I know you guys said you really don't do owner occupied, but if you had a business owner buying a mixed use property who wanted to live in one of, especially if there were multiple rental units, is that a project you'd look at or, uh, no, we would not be able to do anything where the, uh, where the owner uh, or its family was occupying the property. These are specifically meant to be uh, non-consumer loans, business purpose loans. So if uh, the borrower or uh, a member of his family uh, is living in the units, that would disqualify for our programs because we're, we're uh, trying to stay out of the consumer lending business. Understood. Okay, great. Um, all right. So, uh, Sam, um, uh, the, one of the one of the attendees on the program said, "Please send us your broker package uh, to uh, TS Mortgage. Gives you a, an email address. We'll get that in there." Uh, by the great way, name, by the way, everybody great on the audience. Way, I'm sorry. What? Great name, by the way, on that question. <laughs> <laughs> of course, only a Samuel would love a Samuel, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We'll have to fix that one over a beer one time, right, Sam? Um, yes. All right, so here's the uh, folks for the audience and, and attendance members. Continue to pound through these questions, post them in the platform. Um, we'd love to interact and have more opportunity to identify more what you guys want to know about. Do want to remind you guys again about the opportunity to refer a colleague, that little paper airplane widget at the bottom of your screen. If you hit that button, uh, the more times you do, the more people you invite to this program. Um, obviously, they're going to get almost the identical experience to what you guys have got on the rebroadcast. The links are all the same, so please make sure you share this with your friends and colleagues that you think are going to benefit from this, um, cool. because I think there's a lot of great information here. Um, obviously, these guys have thrown a ton of information at you in a very short bit of time. Those broker packets, by the way, are in the resources tab, which is the icon that looks kind of like a clipboard uh, or, um, or like a document with a folded tab. It almost looks like a Word document icon, the widgets. If you mouse over the widgets, by the way, guys, you'll see uh, specifically which we, uh, uh, widget has the resources in it. The broker packets are in there, guys, or you can go to the Corvus website to get more information about that. Um, 
Uh, right, other questions here, um, again from Samuel. Uh, please, can you do multi-purpose residential home use for commercial, like ch uh, children's daycare, uh, in-home daycares, or other home-based businesses? Is that enough commercial for you guys, or because it has a residential component, is that gonna throw it out? We're stretching the boundaries of what's residential. So we're doing things like student housing um, and senior housing. Uh, we haven't been uh, financing assets that are not used for a residence. So uh, something that's a, a daycare center and is otherwise not occupied, we look at that more as a commercial uh, component. And the rules that I talked about before would, would apply that we try to limit that to uh, 20 to 30% of the overall uh, package. Okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Where can we get a summary of your programs and guidelines? Um, Sam, if you wouldn't mind just kind of reiterating, where, where do they go to get that information and access those resources? Yeah, and of course, uh, CoreVest uh, Core Finance, we have uh, information on all of our programs as well as uh, we should have some on the resources uh, widget page that you mentioned earlier uh, earlier today. Also, feel free, you can uh, email me at samuel.b at cvest.com. Um, that's the letter C, V E S T dot com. And we'll be more than happy to have a relationship manager or account executive reach out to you with those programs. All right, cool. Um, let's see, one of the questions that came up a while back, I'm going to search for it here for just a minute. Um, uh, I think I typed an answer to it, but I, I was going to get your guys' opinions. Um, you know, where can you go to find more of these loans? If, 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 if an originator is not already doing business in the investor space, where do they go find more investors? Well, I would say, first of all, depending on what type of marketing or what, what the way you're doing your business now, um, I, I, would, I wouldn't reinvent the wheel. So if you're doing um, direct mail or if you're doing a dialer system or if you already have, uh, you're doing networking activities, um, or you're doing presentations for first-time home buyers, for, for instance, well, let's take that and, and let's tweak it towards the investment market. So instead of doing first-time home buyer uh, web, or excuse me, seminars, let's do seminars for investment property owners. Um, and you can qualify them um, by reaching out in your marketplace uh, to the realtor connections that you have. Uh, they'll be able to, they, they know who are buying the uh, investment properties. Um, that's one one uh, one way. Again, if you're doing some of the the more intense marketing, um, feel free to contact me. I'll share my industry experience with you. I'll work with your marketing team, with your direct mail team. We'll kind of tweak the way that you're sending the information out to help you aggregate more interest in these types of loans. So there's uh, a couple different ways. Um, there's uh, you know. Again, between social, there, there, there's a lot of ways out there. I, I could do a whole maybe we'll do a whole webinar on that too, Eric. Yeah, we really could. Um, just my two cents as a you know business development coach and trainer for the better part of the last 15 years, um, where I my coaching clients have seen the greatest results from it is really going after the people who know the people who are wanting to buy investment properties, be that financial planners, CPAs, even local property management companies because all their clients are real estate investors. If you happen to be lucky enough to be in a market where there's actually, a, there are a couple of professional trade groups, like uh, one of the bigger ones nationally is called REIA, Real Estate Investors Association of America. Um, if they happen to have a local chapter, you can do searches for that. And that's a great way to get into the space if you're not already in it, don't already have the customer base footprint. Um, you know, the more you do of these, the easier they get and the more experience you get with it. The other great thing about working with investor loans is most investors want to buy multiple properties a year, year after year after year, because they're trying to build a future income stream for themselves, right? I mean, you know, what better way to create residual, you know, repeat loan flow for yourself, right? Um, all right. Uh, okay. There's a question here from... Uh, I, I'm assuming that's George Wa uh, or, or Georgius or Gorgeous. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Um, for the non-recourse portfolio loans, what's the approximate minimum evaluation to the portfolio you are looking for? Well, as we said before, we're targeting a minimum $500,000 loan amount, and we t uh, want a minimum 75% or maximum. 75% loan to value. So that would imply about $625,000 of value. Okay. So that's a, a decent sized portfolio. Um, right. 
What are the products uh, you guys? I would point out that we're, we're looking for assets. Each asset in the portfolio uh, should have a, a trading value of fifty thousand dollars or more. Okay. All right. All right. Trading value of fifty thousand or more. Okay. Uh, all right, so here's another one from Robert Dell. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, it's an easy name this time. Um, how about financing rooming houses? Yeah, that would be a little tough. We uh, are focused on uh, permanent residences. One of the underwriting requirements we have is that the leases initially be for 12 months, and then they can roll to a month-to-month -month lease thereafter. I think a lot of rooming houses are really uh, start out as a month-to-month uh, unit and they're really not full. They're more like uh, uh, SROs or, or one room that's not a full uh, unit with a kitchen and a, uh, a bathroom. So I think that would be a little tough. Okay, so temporary housing, condo tells those kind of things are not necessarily your guys' cup of tea, right? Exactly. We're we're trying to provide uh, financing for permanent housing. Okay, uh, here's an interesting one. Um, Anthony Jennings asked the question, I am an MLO signed with a lender on its retail side. Can I also sign up with Corvast? Uh, LOs who work in more of a captive environment and aren't allowed to broker, can they work with you guys as well? Well, I, I would, first of all, I would want you to check with, with your employer. We don't want you to, to violate any uh, employment agreement that you have with them. Um, what I have seen in the past is uh, with the, uh, if, if the current company you work for has no desire to, to uh, broker out loans or to do business with us, um, they allow uh, certain originators to set up their own LLC. So you have an outside uh, company that you're originating these loans with, and then you could submit and get approved with us um, that way. Um, I would love to get the whole company signed up. Of course, we'd love to get our, our product out to as many, uh, as many folks as we can. Um, but I would say, I don't, I don't want to tell you something that goes against your employment agreement with your current company, but um, that would be the kind of way to do it. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little challenging. Get yourself fired because you want to get into this space. But, you know, as originators, you know, we're self-employed. We, we kill, right? So the, the the element of it is, is do we, you know, do what's best for us and our family or do we, you know, continue to leave ourselves in a more restricted environment? You always have to weigh the cost and benefit of those types of situations yeah. individually. One, one thing I'll add, thing. yeah, I'll add to that, Eric, um, is... I would bring it to your employer because it, a lot of these companies aren't aware of the products that we're talking about today. And again, uh, volume is somewhat slowing down across the board. Uh, I know that the streamlined business is kind of kind of tougher to do these days on the government side. Um, so the, the, the owners of the company or the, or the board should be looking for different ways to do business. Um, this is, and again, this is an opportunity to do business um, nationwide, even if you're not a nationwide lender. So it's uh, it's all about being uh, proactive and, and not reactive. And, uh, and and really showing that entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit and finding ways to you know to help people. So you know and, and introducing it at the company level has a lot more leverage for you as an individual. I mean, you create an additional product line that lets your company pick up five, ten percent more of the business that they've previously been turning away from. Um, you know, they're probably going to be pretty happy with you as a yeah. as a colleague and an employee. Uh, of the team bringing that to them. Uh, so a lot of great information. Um, one other quick question popped in here, Sam, with uh, a prepayment penalty on any of your products? Yes, so on, again, these are commercial loans on residential property. So on the uh, single asset uh, rental loan, single property loan we spoke about, that does have a three-year prepay. It's a three, two, one declining prepay. Um, and that's on the unpaid balance of the loan. Not uh, you know not the original balance, and uh, you can prepay. I, I'd have to look at the, the the rider, but I think it's up to twenty percent per year um, without uh, triggering any any penalty. And then on our um, portfolio loans, um, excuse me, let me back up. On the bridge loans, twelve months financing, no real prepayment penalty. On the portfolio loans, and, and Chris, feel free to jump in. We do have a yield maintenance um, for, uh, for instance, on a five year loan, it's sixty months. The yield maintenance is going to be fifty four months. And on the uh, 10 year, which is 120 months, uh, basically it's 114 months of yield maintenance that you're guaranteeing as the investor. Um, and, and that's basically how it works. Chris, do you want to add anything to that? No, that's, that's correct. It's uh, yield maintenance. Uh, we have made exceptions to that. Uh, so uh, if, if that's a critical ask of your client, uh, we'd be happy to talk about it. But the majority of our loans do have that yield maintenance feature. Okay. All right, guys. So, 
I'm just going to take a, a quick aside, guys. You guys have shared some wonderful information with the audience, guys. We are getting close to the end of this, uh, the time slot here. So as we wrap up, uh, two things I want to share with the audience. One, audience, continue to share comments and questions in the platform. Um, any of the questions that we did not address uh, live during the event, um, uh, the Corvus team, not only Chris and Sam, but a lot of the folks that support them behind the scenes are going to be available to answer a lot of these questions and follow up and make sure you get those answers. So please uh, continue to type in those questions as we wrap up uh, with today's event. Secondly, uh, if you, you know, whoever you think of, and, and, and I'll encourage you to try to even think of some folks that you care about, some colleagues, some other MLOs in your office some friends that you've met at conferences across the years, uh, use that share, uh, 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 invite a friend link, um, that paper airplane looking widget at the bottom of your screen to invite others. That contest is going to continue to run throughout uh, the next uh, half day or so uh, when we even pick up some of the on-demand folks who weren't able to join us live today. Uh, the folks that have, have uh, contributed the most to sharing this information with their colleagues and friends that they care about are going to have the opportunity to win that uh, $25 Amazon gift card. Otherwise, uh, um, it, you know, when it comes to the Originator Connect Network, you can check us out at OriginatorConnectNetwork.com um, uh, uh, or find more information at MortgageConferences.com uh, to check out about upcoming uh, future events of the webcast series. Also watch the circulars that, uh, that you'll receive via email from us, uh, alerting you to other new learning opportunities as they come up um, throughout the year. Check out the live conferences as well. Uh, here at Originator Connect, our only goal is helping you get from where you are to where you want to go as fast as possible and giving you the tools and resources to grow your business and make more money uh, year over year as an originator. But with that, Sam, uh, Chris, any final comments you'd like to share with the audience just before we close down here in, a, in about two minutes? Chris? Uh, yeah, look, I, we really look forward to uh, building relationships with as many of you as possible. This is a pretty large and exciting uh, business, and it's growing every day. So uh, please uh, look at your uh, client rosters and, and think about people uh, you know, who are in the uh, investment space. I think we all know somebody who owns an investment property and is probably looking for financing. So the, this could be a really great way uh, to augment your business and, and make some new clients. Awesome, awesome. And again, yep, and, and just to, uh, um, to follow up on that, you know, as broker owners, if you're listening, uh, again, it's one way for you to create more business for your company. Uh, it's also a way to offer your, your originators more products to go out there and originate. Uh, and also, it's an opportunity for you uh, when you're recruiting new loan officers, recruiting new originators. You can say that, hey, we offer these loan products. Does your company uh, offer them? So it's something to keep in mind. And, and again, just want to thank everybody. Really appreciate all your time. We know your time is valuable. Um, also, thank all my uh, all my friends and, uh, and and customers and clients that are texting me all these funny pictures as I'm going through this. Next time, I'll put the phone in the bag, and they tell me to smile more. So there you go. <laughs> Definitely, guys. Well, thanks again for joining us on one of our Originator Connect live webcast events. Uh, watch for future upcoming updates, like, tweet, or share uh, with all your friends and colleagues, and encourage them to join us as a part of the Originator Connect network. Make it a great week, everybody. Thank you.